views expressed in the videos are my observation, analysis of events, persons based on principles of astrology. It's not my intent to predict, forecast absolute outcomes, only suggest how they may unfold. Nothing is set in stone. I could be wrong, but often I'm right. My desire is not to promote fear, only inform about what we see unfolding. It is our wish to prepare our subscribers for events that could affect them, their family, their goals, and their future, to help to prepare for what you may already feel suspect is happening, and to send a warning shot across the bow and raise a flag of concern. Our goal is to help, not hinder, in these perilous times, to inspire and offer possible direction, and to reveal that a greater plan and purpose are behind all that is happening. Eventually, we will see a brighter day. If you would like to show your appreciation for our work on these videos or this channel, and also the Knowing Whispers channel, you can always click on the word thanks at the bottom of all the videos. Hello everybody, it's Robert Cosmar of the Astrology of Life YouTube channel and also the three newsletters over on the Substack platform, Knowing Whispers Messages from the Universe, Trump in America, and also Ask the Astrologer. Today my video is going to be on Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. And as you can see here on your screen, I am using a different program. This is the Kepler program. It's also a fine astrology program with a tremendous amount of ability to calculate all kinds of charts and a very colorful layout with a lot of capabilities of changing colors and things like that. Um, something that if you are in the market for an astrology program, you might want to consider looking into this. Okay. All right. I'm going to start off here with his natal chart. And I'm going to point out some things that I feel are significant in understanding Clarence Thomas, okay, and understanding his uh, thinking, so to speak, or how he is influenced. And we fortunately have here a what I would consider to be a pretty high degree rating for his time of birth of being 9 p.m. on June the 23rd, 1948, Pinpoint, Georgia. We also fortunately have the exact birth time for Samuel Alito, and I definitely will be looking at doing a reading video chart on him as well. This is a very, very busy time. There are so many things going on in so many areas, so many things that I'd like to point out, but it's like I have to kind of sit back and I have to say, oh, okay, slow down, just take the things that really seem to be, you know, in the public eye and talk about those. Um, but my main thing, obviously, is to want to keep you apprised about what is going on with Donald Trump. Okay, as you know by now, that things are still kind of in a state of flux. And this situation, like I said, right now, all right, I'm sure that most people feel a little bit nervous because you're waiting for what uh, Judge Merchan's going to do on the 11th of July. Uh, a lot of different opinions about that on my um, community and YouTube. Uh, there were a lot of different viewpoints as to what they thought that the judge was going to do. I think the majority of the ones that did respond there felt like it would be a mixture of things. House arrest, you know, probation, things like this. Um, and of course, the majority of folks out there would like to see him put away. All right. But the reality of it is... Okay, uh, there are many things to be considered, and um, we can only hope that they will make the right decision. And I may do another video, too, on the summer here for, for Trump as well, because we haven't gotten into the real meat of what's going to be happening with him. As we begin to move further into this month, as Uranus begins to move to the square to Mars, there are a lot of possibilities of things that could happen. OK, he has the two progressions also going on during the summer. Um, but that Uranus is kind of a focal point. And when it goes exact, that square, 
on the 29th, I think it is, of July, we'll have a better picture of how Donald Trump is positioned going into the fall, okay, into, um, you know, the election season itself. Just to give you an idea about how I handle a lot of these charts and things, okay, um, a lot of times when you take a look at a person and a situation, like, for example, Donald Trump and the chart of the USA, and you take a look at, let's say, the chart of Melania, or you take a look at the chart of other people that are close to Trump, what you see happening to them can often tell you what direction things will go with Trump. And this is often what I do when I do my videos, is I look at several different charts to be able to give me an idea of, okay, how does what they do affect what's happening here? And is what's happening here really bad? Well, maybe that reflects upon what's happening over here, you know, with Donald Trump. Okay. All right. Let's get back here to Clarence Thomas. And you're going to see something here that's very familiar. All right. Because there is a key aspect here that is in Donald Trump's natal chart. It's also in Melania's chart. Okay. Although she has an opposition from Neptune to Mercury. Okay. Uh, the famous aspect of deception and higher spiritual consciousness, okay? Um, I think that it's so important for astrologers when they're talking about the outer planets, besides all the positive, warm, and fuzzy stuff, okay, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, that you take into consideration the dark side of these things, all right? There are people that are here that are here working through dark karma, all right? They're not necessarily here for selfless purposes. They're not here to support uh, the warm and fuzzy view, you know, that uh, we all would like to embrace and believe that, you know, that's life. Life should be that way all the time. It can't be anywhere else. But when these things happen, uh, we begin to wonder, woe is me. Why did this happen? We want to blame it on the devil or we want to blame it on something else or, you know, our partner or whatever. Uh, the last thing we want to do is to take personal responsibility okay, for our behavior and for how we're acting and what we're doing. So in the chart here, okay, of Clarence Thomas, and you can see this over here uh, on the left, he has Neptune squaring, okay, I believe that's the sun squaring. I think this is possibly, let me take a look here at something. I may have to go up a little bit here to see it. All right, he has Neptune squaring the sun. Okay, Neptune squaring Mercury, Neptune squaring Venus. Okay, Neptune is not the planet of logic and reasoning. Oddly enough, he has Neptune in his ninth house, the house that has to do with legal issues. All right, and they square in the area, okay, of service and work to others three very significant important planets down here all right so neptune again if you take into consideration donald trump's neptune squaring okay his mercury you have the situation there of somebody who's a con man and a liar all right i wouldn't say this is the case with clarence thomas i would say that the case with clarence thomas is okay is that he is open to deception all right He's open to not really seeing things as they really are, okay, but more so the way he imagines them to be. And, of course, you can go back years ago to when he was in, in the process of being confirmed. Uh, the situation with, uh, I think it was Anita Thomas, the clerk that he supposedly, um, you know, may have been improper in his, his conduct. And for all practical purposes, it probably was. But I think that all of us being adults in the real world, understanding what's going on now and seeing all the garbage that's being, you know, flushed out. Um, we don't live in a world, so to speak, where morals rule. We live in a world where money talks and, of course, the slogan goes, be as walks. And um, we want people that have an alignment to our view and positions of power. And contrary to what people may say, I hope that... All of you are at least getting a healthy respect of what Donald Trump has been able to do because they began this process long ago of confirming these judges and lining them up in different courts, federal, state along the way. And 
for some reason, he foresaw that for him to be able to win these elections, that he would have to have some influence from these other, you know, other uh, uh, institutions. Okay. So despite the fact of his health, despite the fact of his rather strange and odd behavior, uh, there is within this individual a unique karmic power, if you want to call it that, to be able to create chaos, to be able to create fear, to feed off of it. Okay. And um, I think that it's, it's a healthy way for us to begin to realize that this is not just your common messed up wealthy individual acting dumb. All right. This is somebody that definitely has an important part to play in the future of America and maybe in the future of the world. So right off the bat here again, the thing that we're looking at has to do with this natal Neptune influencing the Sun and Mercury and Venus in the area of the sixth house, which is the work environment, work and service to other people. So this Neptune has a um, unbalanced view towards the things in this area. It affects them emotionally because these planets are in Cancer. Very emotional type individual. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to go to here though, okay, has to do with the position of Pluto. Transiting Pluto has already gone into his first house. And I'm going to go over here and bring up another chart, okay, that'll show us the aspects that are going on in his life. And you'll be able to see here how long. And I use this program because I wanted you to be able to get an idea of the timeline. Sometimes on the other program that I use, it's almost too much information at once. And it's not clearly visible what it is that I'm trying to say or maybe hard for you to digest this. But Pluto is in the first house. And of course, the first house in astrology has to do with the public image. Okay. It has to do with your health. It has to do with your public image. Uh, in the Vedic astrology, it would be a whole different ball game, but essentially, um, you know, you're talking here about an individual that is an individual who is emotional. He is a Cancer, uh, even though his Moon is in Aquarius, he's still a Cancer. So uh, it's a part of his curse, so to speak, to have his emotions on his sleeve sometimes. And this situation right here is very uncomfortable for him, and it's a long-lasting situation. You can see here on June the 30th, 2024, is when Pluto will conjunct that moon. He is going to be under pressure for a considerable amount of time. Now, for those of you, and I'll include myself, that would like to see him gone tomorrow, it ain't going to probably happen that way. Okay, It may take several years. And in all honesty, in talking about these Supreme Court justices from looking at their charts, if their charts are any indication of what could happen to them, this could be a sign that democracy wins in November. Not absolutely certain, but when I compare these men's charts, because they are so volatile, it could be an indication that actions have been taken or will be taken against them to see that they're removed from the Supreme Court itself. So, a little bit of hope for everybody there. You can see that Pluto goes retrograde, comes back in January. All right. And just to give you an idea how far this goes out. Okay. Um, I think I can show you here. If I can find it again. Okay. I know it's here because I've seen it. Okay. I'm going to go to 26 and 27. Okay. I know I saw it here somewhere. Bear with me. Okay, you can see some other things are going on here that are pretty heavy as well. All right, I'll find it here in a minute. Okay, but I don't want to. Oh, here we go. 25 and 26. All right, this is in October of 2025. You can see that Pluto comes back to the moon again. All right, on the 4th, on the 23rd. Very heavy duty aspect. You can also see here something else is starting to develop. All right. You can see the transiting Neptune squares the sun starting in August of the 26th. Okay. Neptune squaring. Okay. Mercury on the 9th. All right. And 
in a sense, this transit will be much stronger than the effect in his natal chart because the effect in his natal chart, uh, I think it is that Neptune is something like 10 degrees of Libra and it's probably maybe six, seven degrees off of being exact square. So the influence of it upon him may not be as obvious as what will be happening at this time in 2026 as we have this, this Neptune aspect of deception and lying going on. Okay, let's go back here to 2024-25. All right, you can see that there's other aspects here. The red usually indicates hard aspects, and if you see a pile of them, this will give you an idea of how uncomfortable things are getting for somebody. If they're green, it's much more, you know, pleasant. For example, you can see here Uranus transiting. Uranus is going to trine his ascendant here on these three in these three <laughs> times. The problem is, again, with an individual, you never know how much Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune energy that they're embodying, or how much their higher self is going to allow it to function through them. All right. For a lot of people, Uranus trining the Ascendant, trining anything, will produce almost nothing. Okay. We'll have to see if something happens of an unusual nature here that benefits him as a possibility. Um, you know, to offset maybe the Pluto conjuncting the Moon here that will bring a lot of pressure to bear on him. Okay. You can see down here that Saturn's going to oppose Mars in August. It's going to also do it in January. Okay. Very difficult times for an individual to find the energy and the strength and the drive to get anything accomplished because they're having to face the effects of Saturn, of past actions. Okay. And the thing I'm trying to show you all here is the fact that this is just the beginning of uh, the future conflict that he is going to go through. And I showed you here a little bit ago, for example. Okay, and keep in mind now, we have, again, we have Pluto here conjuncting that moon. Basically for a couple of years. You can see here uh, in 2025-26, again, boom, boom. And this may be the last time that it hits it, but it's not the end here of what's going on with him. Okay, um, it's going down here towards the bottom to show you some other things. Um, okay, that could have an influence. We have some progressions here that definitely will have somewhat of an impact on him. Okay, the Venus opposing the Moon and the Sun conjuncting Mars here. Okay, probably he'll be extremely angry at that particular point in time. But I want to go here a little bit into the future, into 2027. And again, I know that probably you're all saying, oh no, is this going to be drawn out till then? Well, we don't know. Okay. We hope not, but the important point here is to show you what we're looking at. Here is Neptune squaring Venus. Could be a threat to his marriage. Okay, here again, squaring Mercury and squaring the Sun. And you can see this is going to happen several times, so it's an indication that this is an ongoing issue here. It could be with Neptune squaring the Sun, you know, and Mercury, he is 75 years old. Could be health issues, because these are in the sixth house. Okay, uh, Neptune, you know, squaring could be mental health issues, okay, because of pressure um, upon him that's brought to bear. And again, you can look at it two ways. Pressure brought to bear on him because of a democratic, you know, situation administration, or it could be him being able to get away with stuff because there is a Republican in the, in the, uh, the presidency and it's a part of the whole process now, that lying becomes something that is done and it's socially acceptable to do that throughout the government, whether it's Department of Justice, the White House, or the Supreme Court, okay? In other words, in that situation, you can just pretty much, you know, excuse my language, shit can the entire Constitution, all right, if things get to that point. Now, Saturn's opposing Neptune here. Okay, he's got to deal with that. Saturn opposing Neptune is a very discombobulating aspect. It's the influence of Saturn trying to deal with the influence of Neptune. 
And this creates a situation of dire uncertainty within a person. Whenever you have aspects of Neptune and Saturn, it feels like you have lost your focus. You have lost a sense of purpose and drive, motivation and direction. Okay. And the only way you can deal with that is that you have to write it out. You have to trust that the best will happen, what is meant to happen, okay, and that it is for your good, okay, uh, and it is a process of fulfilling your karma and your destiny and your fate, okay. So, again, this particular period here, 26-27, is very uh, challenging for him. And uh, I think there's one other thing here on this particular uh, chart that I want to show you too that comes into play. Here we go. All right. Now this is September of 2026. Okay. And what I'm looking at here is progressed ascendant squaring Pluto. Okay. And I'm going to go back to the natal chart again. Remember this is 2026. Okay. He's been going through a lot of intense emotional stuff in regards to his uh, his life. Um, you can see here that the moon rules the sixth house, the house of health, the house of work. Well, I'm sorry, the seventh house, the house of others, okay? The house of dealing with other people, all right? Pluto is conjuncting this, going to conjunct this, going to transform, okay, his relationships probably and his health as a result of this. And of course, you also look at the house that Pluto is, the 10th house, the house of his career, his profession. So you can get a picture here now that this man is under extreme heat, extreme pressure. Throw in all this Neptune, okay, all this denial that he carries with him and this desire to keep his position of power and to hide from whatever is going down the road. Let's say that the second Biden administration decides to go after him in some way, shape or form. They find stuff on him, uh, you know, like this four million dollars that he got from some of these people that um, he had cases, uh, you know, pending, you know, on the docket of the Supreme Court that involved their businesses. Very unethical very unethical, you know, and we're seeing more and more of this unethicalness coming out, particularly in Alito and in Clarence Thomas. But Thomas, for right now, with Pluto conjuncting that moon, he's going to take a lot more heat than what Samuel Alito is, as far as I can remember from looking at his chart. And you have to keep in mind, okay, for those of you that are astrologers, for those of you that are learning astrology or that have been doing astrology for a long time, okay, there are several things that you have to keep in mind. And that is that we're talking about karma here, okay? We're talking about the karma, fate, and destiny of an individual, all right? And with astrology, there is no emotional bias towards that. When you're looking at two people's horoscopes and you're looking at the aspects and stuff and one of them is really devastated and the other one is relatively, you know, sextiles and trines and conjunctions, you know who's going to have the most difficult life. And you don't have to be a brilliant genius to do that as an astrologer. You just have to know that one particular chart is showing intense conflict and struggle and strife and karma. And the other one is a life relatively of, of you know, serenity, ease, so to speak. And um, there are people that have life like that. They're very rare, you know, but they do have life like that. And, uh, or they may have conflict and stuff that is very minimal or hidden. There's just no end, no end to the vastness of astrology, to the vastness of human consciousness, and to the vastness of the karma that we all individually have and that we're working out through each lifetime. So, again, Clarence Thomas here. I don't have a title for this particular video, but I wanted to get it done this week. And I'll think about Alito because there's so many other things that are going on. And, and um, I may want to go more in depth into the chart about Trump's summer. I try to give you a sense, a better sense, a better picture of what we see happening so that um, the response that you see emotionally from your neighbors, your friends, your family, and also from 
um, you know, the news media in particular, when things really begin to go against the democracy type thing, you know, as we begin to move closer and closer to the election, it's going to be a real flashpoint for people, you know. It's going to be a real emotional bomb, so to speak. And we're going to have to deal with it. And this is why uh, over in my Substack newsletter, I spend so much time working with my guidance and trying to help people to understand how through meditation and through inner contemplation, you can minimize the damage of emotional flare-ups. Okay? You can maintain control of yourself without having to be in control of everything else you see happening. All right? Because I feel very strongly that's going to be the big thing. When you take a look at the election and the, the opposition of Mars to Pluto, uh, it's going to take some strength, courage, integrity, inner strength to not be sucked in to a lot of the volatility that could be going on at that time, for whatever reason, depending on who wins. Okay, um, and like I said, astrologically, considering all the factors, um, I feel that you need to be at least warned, cautioned about these things so that when they do happen, when you are blindsided by things that happen that are unexpected, which with Trump can happen any day, okay, it doesn't throw you into a tailspin. It doesn't throw you into a dark emotional cell within inside of yourself. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. And I hope you enjoy the video. I hope that you'll share it if you, you know, want to on the internet. Um, keep in mind that this Saturday from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay, that I'll be doing my first of two monthly live streams on Trump Talk and Awakening, combining what is going on with Trump with the awakening process and showing the significance of them both. Okay. Um, and then I'll do the second one on the 29th, which I think is the last Saturday of the month. And I'll be doing two a month through June, July, August, September. Okay. I think it's four months. And then October, I'll do them every week until the election. Uh, because as we get closer to the election, we get a better view of what things are going to do, how things are going to develop. All right. Uh, keep in mind, okay. Uh, there are several things. Keep in mind that if you want to get nourished, if you want to get support for your own awakening processes, uh, my partner and I, CJ, have newsletters over on the platform Substack. Mine is Knowing Whispers Messages from the Universe. CJ's is CJ's Whispers of Knowing. Okay? And these newsletters are sharing information that our guidance is sharing with us about how to deal with what we're going through to help us to prepare okay for the eventual future that we're going to have to walk into so keep that in mind also for some of you if you are interested in being able to uh, get together on facebook with like-minded aware souls we started a group over there called knowing beyond believing and um, it's a private group that um, we take those individuals that are serious about awakening and consciousness and meditation and higher self-learning, okay? So if you are that way, uh, I want to extend the invitation for you to go over there and to apply for membership. We would love to have you if you have things to share, okay, about your own experience awakening. And uh, I think you'll benefit from what others you know, are there also sharing. Okay, I think that's about the end of it. All right. Thank you so much for those of you that are still members of the, the channel, those of you that are still subscribers. All right. We do appreciate you. We do send you our love. Okay, sincerely. And uh, for those of you that, you know, have been with me for so long and have made donations and continue to make monthly donations, um, we appreciate you as well, and we're thankful for your support, not only just in that, but also in the process of your comments and contributing through the discussions and the polls in the channel. Okay. 
And from the love of my life, CJ, my spiritual partner, my best friend, love of my life. Okay. Um, we're grateful to be able to be here on the internet to share uh, our experiences with you and to hear from you and what you are learning in your life as well. Okay. Thank you very much. And I look forward to our next video. Take care.